six <laughs> minutes. For seven minutes, right? Chad's <laughs> like, no, nah, man, I, I don't think I was going to go practice today. And I was like, I look back, I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you there. You were more fucked up than me. Being on the spirit plane had some issues, I think. She was sleep, sleep farting. You heard her or you just thought it was her? I, s- I sat right next to her. I smelled Whoa. What was that? Time for the show. show. <laughs> <laughs> Now, when you do go to spring training, are you gonna bring your chinchilla and your turtle? <laughs> My dad tell you about it. <laughs> <laughs> the SEC is God. They hate fat people. <laughs> I mean, I get crushed for that. You know what I mean? It's like, come on, man. Hey, just the south, bro. You got a bunch of food down here. Like they, they should. <laughs> Look at Lloyd. <laughs> you know what, Lloyd? <laughs> You're looking for a recruiting coordinator, Coach. I'm here. <laughs> He's like, I'll piss my pants right now. <laughs> no way. No way. Yeah. Long gray pants. Long gray pants. He goes, I'll piss my pants right now. Welcome back to Mike'd Up. Today is Monday, April 8th. It is the uh, full solar eclipse day that already passed, which I didn't know that already happened. I didn't know that we were supposed to be outside. I thought it was a nighttime thing. Didn't know it was a daytime thing. I guess that makes sense. When they say don't look at the sun, you can't look at the sun at night. <laughs> um, wasn't paying much attention to that. Obviously, it was a big deal. People drove all over the country. Texas to, is where you needed to be. Texas, Arkansas. Um, other places I don't know of, but apparently you drive all the way out there, and it's a two-minute ordeal. I don't think it was that long of a uh, time where, like, the whole eclipse happened, but it is Solar Eclipse Day. We are still standing. Um, all the TikTokers and Instagram real people on social media were saying that the end is near, that we're apparently it was the end of the world or something. Is this why happening. your wife had you get um, set up for? I, I didn't. We didn't. We didn't make a bunker or have uh, MREs <laughs> or anything like that. We. I, I, I rolled, you shirked all your responsibilities. I rolled the dice on that one. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I said, we're, gonna, okay. we're gonna take our shot at this, and if it's our time, it's our time. We did not die. Uh, LSU baseball has it's not. Dead. They are not dead. Dead yet. Dead. Uh, they are in a pickle, but not dead. Right. Uh, this show is late arriving. Hopefully, the season is late arriving for LSU. They sit at three and nine right now in the SEC, uh, one series short of the midway point. That next series is on the road at Tennessee, so it doesn't get any easier. Uh, we will have a conversation throughout the course of this show on what we think. Actually, not even what we think is the issue. We're going to point out some of the stuff that's going on and maybe what we should, what we want to see moving forward. We are not the head coach. We have never coached in our lives. We've just been on the other side of it. Um, we have some experience in this arena. Jared's on a team that was very bad in 07. He yeah. was on a team that started off looking the same way. Very bad in 08. <laughs> and then they obviously go on that magical run and set the stage for our team in 09 to win it. And then following that in 09, 2010 team uh, started out the season guns blazing, 32 and 6, won the country. And all of a sudden we fell off a cliff for a little bit. And we had to fight our way back into the SC tournament. That's my experience. So instead of starting fast, this team starts slow. Uh, but there's always a way to turn around. 2011, unfortunately, I was at two of those years. Uh, 2011, we started off not great. A lot of close losses. We had to make our way back 
We had to fight our way through it. We were th ended up 13 and 17 in the SEC. Did not make it to the conference tournament. Uh, but back then, only eight teams made it. They changed the rules specifically because of us that year. We were 36 and 20. We had an RPI in the top 25. Didn't make the SEC tournament. Didn't get in that large bid because of that. Uh, rules were changed because of it. But we're going to share our exper experiences within those seasons and what we got out of it, what went wrong, what we wish we could have done differently, and what helped us ultimately kind of get back on track uh, at some point in that season. LSU Gymnastics, though, has been balling. They are in the, semi the national semifinal um, in Fayetteville. Is it in Fayetteville? No, they won the Fayetteville Regional. I don't know. Where's the semifinals? Anybody know? They're in the, na they're in the national semifinal. Don't know exactly where it's at, but... Uh, they have a really good shot to bring home a national championship to LSU. South Carolina wins the national championship in women's basketball, beats Iowa. Uh, a lot of viewers for this women's basketball tournament. A lot of viewers from the Elite Eight on. Um, I think a lot of that is because there's a lot of fanfare and a lot of uh, household names in, in women's college basketball. Caitlin Clark being the main one. She is must-see TV. All of those games that broke records... She was right there in the middle of it. El Kaylin Clark versus LSU. Kaylin Clark versus who did who Iowa beat in the uh, Final Four? UConn. 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 Kaylin Clark against. Uh, man, the camera looks way better now. Way better. Thanks, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Cr camera Cr looks great. I'm Quick sorry. I'm sorry for all of you that had to deal with these. We told you. This is um, work in progress. We haven't changed this set in a second. We will have some movement coming here a little bit, not technically, just aesthetically moving forward. Uh, but Caitlin Clark was kind of the star of the show, star of the tournament. She ends up get, uh, facing South Carolina, first undefeated season in South Carolina's history, and it ends in a national championship. Congratulations to them. Staying in basketball, flipping it to the men's. John Calipari. Everybody thought Will Wade was gonna make the move to Arkansas. Uh, John Calipari says, oh, whoa, hold on. That's I, think, my friend. I think Kentucky's over me. I think I'm kind of over Kentucky. Let me just go on down the road to Fayetteville, Arkansas, and sign a five-year deal to be the new Arkansas Razorbacks head coach. I would imagine the big money people in Arkansas said, hey, we can help you out. We've been in the Elite Eight two of the last three years. We're a basketball school now. You need to come here and turn us into a championship basketball school. So Calipari goes there, makes a, uh, you know, cool. people were questioning it. I think that the Kentucky fans, like spoiled uh, winning fans, are probably happy that he's gone. Be careful what you wish for. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with the new coach. I don't know who that is going to be. Um, and before we, or now before we get to the SEC conference, or before we get to LSU baseball conversation, let's run through some of the SEC stuff. Uh, some interesting series happened this weekend. We want to talk about how bad LSU has been. Um, how Florida look? Ole Miss is, I mean, um, Missouri has been very bad. Missouri was actually worse than LSU going into the weekend. They're not worse than them anymore. So Missouri was 1-8. and eight, Only win being the only loss Kentucky had who swept again this yeah. weekend. So now they're 11-1 and one in conference, which is crazy, right? I think Arkansas is 11-1 and one as well. Um, I think they just swept Ole Miss. Maybe Arkansas has got multiple losses, but they may no, have. No, Kentucky to. sweeps Alabama. Arkansas swept Ole Miss. So they did. Vanderbilt obviously takes two out of three from LSU. <clears throat> um, Mississippi State takes two or three from Georgia. Tennessee two or three from Auburn. And the big one, Missouri one and eight, sweeps Florida. Florida. Now Missouri is now four and eight with a losing record, uh, but. Kind of shows you that any given weekend, any team can win. Which, you take a step back and you look at where LSU's at, hasn't been great. Three, three out of four Sundays in the SEC, you've been 10-run ruled. Not only have you been 10-run ruled, you've been 10-run ruled in a game where you have an opportunity to win the series. Right? Florida, you should have won game two, didn't get, then you get 10-run ruled. Right? You played uh, Mississippi State... You felt like you had a chance to win game two. You don't. You get 10 run rolled. You play Mississippi State first, right? Then you play Florida. Then you play at Arkansas. And Arkansas 
all three games, you get, you get swept at Arkansas. All three games are pretty tight. Don't get 10 on rule on Sunday. Then you come home and you're like, hey, this is a must win. They go off Thursday and they do what we th- said they needed to do. They need to go out there, get a, get off to a hot start, scored nine runs, right? You need to figure out a way to to limit the damage. So you give up nine runs, you, you score nine, give up four, then you give up a three spot, then you're able to shut it down, you put an insurance one, you win 10-6. Boom, this is a good big win. You th- this is stuff that's been happening all year. You felt like it was going south. All of a sudden, you're able to right the ship and you won. Then you go into the next game, and back and forth, back and forth, you get into the eighth inning, you're up by a run. Two outs, runner on first base, maybe? Yep. First base, right? Yep. Backside. You have an opportunity Two outs. to shut it down. Mm-hmm. You have an opportunity to get the crowd behind you. You have an opportunity to go into the ninth inning or the eighth inning, put up some insurance runs before you go into the ninth inning with the crowd behind you, a chance to close out a series at home, a much needed series. And pitch away, guy goes opposite field, home run to take the lead on LSU. Well, now you're down, I believe you're down one run. I believe you just score another one to make it eight six. No, they score another one in the uh in the ninth, don't they? You're down one run, you have an opportunity. In the bottom of the eighth inning, runners on first and third, one out, to tie the game. You hit the ball, Milam hits the ball pretty hard, ground ball to shortstop, 6-4-3, double play, inning over. They limit the damage, they make the big pitch and make the big play, and you're not, you're not able to tie the game. Then you go into the top of the ninth, they, score an insur- they get an insurance run, bottom of the ninth, they close it out, and it's a ball game. You had opportunities throughout the course of the game. Bases loaded, one out, you don't score a run. Runners on first and third, after they scored, after they had the two-run homer, tie the game, you don't do it. And then you go into Sunday, and it was a boat race from, felt like the beginning. Just, yeah. It just felt like they just they took the, the sails right out of us, and it was just not great. So you wake up on Monday, and you're 3-9 and nine in SEC. Three, ten, three mercy rules on Sundays, or on game three. And it feels like it's bleak and it feels like it's over and it feels like you should, everybody is frustrated and this is this team is just a lost cause that's not the case okay does it look bleak of course <laughs> it's three and nine where they want it to be after 12 games absolutely not is this team just not talented Do they lack talent are they not good no that's not the case they're very talented and they have the potential to be very good some things need to change, though. I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. I don't know what the mentality is of the team. But some things have got to change because you cannot keep going the way that you're going right now. Um, now, I have some thoughts. I know you have some thoughts. Lloyd, you may even have some thoughts. i got some prayers. I would imagine. Uh, don't pray. I don't think that that works. I'm going to start. This is good. Finally, I'm going to get going. But, Jay, you watched the games this weekend. I'll do it. I'll start believing um, in God if it helps us you. <laughs> Well, do it. Well, you need to do it. it. <laughs> well, you need to do it. it. Um, Starting now. Well, you saw the, all three games. You yeah. watched the games this weekend. What was your take on the weekend? Uh, my take on the weekend, I mean, it's kind of been the same as it's been all year. Just not enough strikes thrown, not enough getting ahead of the I say all year, I'm sorry. All conference play so far. Not enough strikes thrown, not enough of getting ahead of guys. Not enough of getting it done in the clutch on the other side. I so here's the thing for me when I look at where they are right now, the three and nine is not necessarily what worries me because I've seen a team start five and twelve and find a way to kind of pull themselves out of the cellar and push themselves into a playoff run, right? So I've seen worse. Okay? That that's not really the side that scares me. It's you got four SEC series down, so you're a month in the SEC play. Three times in that month on Sunday where you said it best, you're in a split. You're in a rubber match. You have a chance to win a series. You have a chance to get over the hump. And three of those times, you got ten run ruled. All three. Three out of four. Well, the fourth one, you had no chance to win a series. Still. But my my point is, is that is the alarming side to me. That is the part that feels like to me is when it's all on the line and it's all out there to go get it done – 
it's not the three and nine for me. Like you, I think that's a byproduct of you have a chance to get it done and you give it up. You know, like the eighth inning on Friday night this past week where it's close. You're four outs away and you give up the backside homer and then you don't fight and go get it back. You don't actually go get it back, right? And so that that part is the, the the part that scares me when I look forward for this team because that's the knowing how to win that we've talked about. You get to those pressure points or pressure games, and we just have not found a way to get over the hump and actually get it done right there. And realistically, in three out of those four and all three of the rubber matches, not only did you not find a way, you weren't even close. You got smacked. Smack. You literally got sent home. Two of them at home, too. One on the road, two of them at home. You're getting 10-run ruled and sent, sent your ass back home to kind of think about it. So that's the alarming side for me. That's got to change. And there's no better time than now because it's literally put up or shut up at this point. So offensively, it wasn't – like I'm looking at game two, Balak score. Offensively, like you get their starter out, their ace, he gave up five earned. You did a great job against their number one. You get him out before the fifth in the fifth inning. He doesn't finish five. Then the other guy comes in, get four hits off of him. He gives up a run. You get him out after inning in the third. Then they bring in uh, McElvain. He goes three and a third. He gives up only two hits, strikes out four, and kind of limits the runs that they're going to put up for the rest of the game, right? But you score six runs, and you're up by – you're up six to five – Going into the top of the eighth, right? Like, you have every opportunity to win with two outs. And you have a guy on the mound that you feel like you're pretty comfortable with on the bump. And, unfortunately, he gives up the opposite field home run. It feels like – and Jay said it very well. He's, it feels like they are playing these games hoping not to lose except, instead of expecting to win, right? And that's a, that, that needs to that, – that mentality needs to shift. Like, that mindset – has got to change, or these things are going to still happen, right? Now, I'm going to compare some of the other years that I have experience with, and I know you're going to compare some of the years that you have experience with, right? I was on Moscona's show this, this, uh, this afternoon. Boy, were you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I dropped you shit. You all your words. <laughs> I dropped the curse word on there. I forgot that I was not on my show. It's can't daytime. do that. Daytime, okay. Listen, yeah, day, yeah, can't do that. Yes. But he did pub the show, so I'm hoping if anybody is watching us now that was listening to the show, I apologize. Or not, if you were cool with it. Um, but I appreciate you tuning in and wa- listening to us and watching us, um, especially if you want to hear about baseball, because that's what we're going to talk about. But Matt talked about comparing this year's team to the 2010 team, or the 2011 team. And I said, yeah, there are some comparisons to that. I would compare us more to the 2010 team, right? This year's team to the 2010 team for a couple reasons. One, 2010 they were coming uh, uh, off a national championship, right? So coming off a national championship with really high expectations. Mm -hmm. You bring a lot of guys back. You bring an All-American back on the mound, right? Which Holman technically is not back, but he's an All-American on the mound, right? You have a number two who um, showed spurts of it in 09 pitch. He was a number number three starter in 2009 in Austin Ross. You bring him back as the number two, I guess that would be similar to Thatcher, right? And so now, and then you bring a closer back who was a freshman who, struck, who, who closed 16 games and set the school record for saves. So you're like, okay, you have that depth, and you got some veteran guys on the mound that kind of been there for a little bit, um, but they really hadn't had a huge role. You felt like they were going to step up. And offensively, you're bringing back – now that, this is a little bit of the difference, right? Offensively, you're bringing back more experience than this team was. You know, you had Micah Gibbs, who was an All-American, freshman All-American, or, soft, or All-American as a sophomore coming back. You had Blake Dean, who was, you know, one of the best hitters to ever come through here. You have um, Hanover, who's coming back for year two. Austin Nola's coming back for year two. I was coming back for year two. So you have all these guys that are coming back, plus you're going to fill it in with some other young guys that come in, Mason Katz is a freshman of that year, right? Doesn't play a ton, but he's still on the team, right? Rafe Rimes is on that team. So you have some offensive talent, and so you thought with these expectations you are going to go out there and win. Now the difference, the biggest difference is we started in 2010 32-6, and 11-4 in conference. 
This year's team started out opposite than that. They're three and nine in conference, right? So 15 games, we're 11 and four. Well, then we start struggling. We lose six straight. We lose six straight games, all by. And the Ole Miss games are real tight, right? So close games. Florida beats the crap out of us, and then at that point we start chasing wins. We have to start. We have three series left, and we have to end up fighting. We end up going from 11 and four to 14 and 16. So if you flip it, our last 15 games are similar to these first 12. Right now, we ended up feeling better about ourselves. We figured out what was going on in the last series of the season. We got the eight seed in the tournament, and we swept through the SC tournament, ended up winning, and we felt like we started playing really good baseball. The reason why I bring that up is because what changed, right? What makes the mindset different? Right? Because every year, and we've talked about this, every single year the team is different. No matter how many guys you bring back, it's a different mentality on the team. It's a different culture on your team. We come back off the national championship. We have four All-Americans returning. We thought this was going to be, you know, just keep, motive, keep going forward, keep doing what you need to do, keep working hard, and you're going to win. That's not the case. Things happen. Injuries happen. Ronaldo got hurt. Guys didn't play as well as they had played the year before. And so – when we started riding the ship towards the back end of the season, it was the guys on the team, the players, had to look at each other and be like, hey, what the fuck are we doing? Right? Like, we didn't, like, Blake Dean didn't come back to do this. Like, we didn't win a national championship, come back this year, go 32 and 6, just to say, oh, be a, be a losing team and not make it to the tournament. Right? So we had to do it ourselves as, as far as, okay. Something we're not doing as players is not working. Coaches can't do anything. They're just going to put you out there, and it's your job to perform. And so as players, we looked at each other, and we, we challenged ourselves. Older guys challenged younger guys. Younger guys challenged older guys and pushed them. And we ended up turning, turning the, the, our fortunes and started winning games. Now, we ended up being a two-seed in UCLA's regional, which we had to play against Bauer and those guys. And – it wasn't like we got blown out. We won the first game, and we only lost by two runs to Bauer. We probably should have won. There were some opportunities there. We ran ourselves out of innings. But for me, I think it's an internal thing as far as motivation for the team. They're motivated. And I'm not blaming the guys. It's just when this happens, there's no magic pill that Jay's going to be able to give the players to See, make them play better. I'm, I'm just being honest, dude. Like, It's easy to say they're motivated. I'm not sure they are because, like I said – when you have these opportunities and you don't, not only do you get beat, like we're seeing Friday, Saturday, them not exactly knowing as a team how to get over the hump. Okay, that's normal. We see that a lot. Then we see them go into Sunday and just completely shut down their leg. That to me brings up, are you motivated? Because I don't know a motivated team that gets 10 run rule three times in a month. I just don't. That's not a thing. I know a lot of, there's, that's not a thing like we said. Missouri's got a losing record on the year, and they were bad. They haven't, they haven't, that hasn't happened to them yet. So to get it, have it happen to you three times in a month, that's very, very, very alarming for me. And that makes me wonder, are you motivated? Do you need to recalculate? Do you need to look yourself in the mirror? Ha, is there some tough conversations that need to happen, whether it's between coach and player, player and player, however it needs to happen? What needs to change because good teams – they don't do that. It just doesn't happen. There is a will to win that just shows up and says, we may lose, but it ain't going to look like this. You may beat me, but I'm not going to give it to you. And that's what, to me, has not happened over the last month. And that that's what makes me wonder, okay, do you have it? And that's what we're going to find out moving forward. Do you or do you yeah. not have it? And they need to find a stopper. Right, and not, I'm not talking about somebody coming out the bullpen and stopping an inning. They need to find a guy where you throw him on the mound, and he starts the game for you. You know you are going to be in every single game, right? Holman's that guy on Friday, but the issues aren't on Friday. You've been playing well on Fridays. You may lose, but you're not playing bad. Gage Jump's been okay, right? He's got good stuff. He's got a four ERA. Um, he's but he's going to continue to get better, I would imagine. The kicker is on Sunday. Whenever you need to win the, the, the rubber match, you got to have a guy on there that you have confidence in going out there and giving you five, six innings and saying, hey, watch this. Yep. 
and you haven't found that guy yet, right? We thought it was going to be Thatcher early. It wasn't. Um, Thatcher's kind of going through his own stuff right now. So you got to replace them with a new guy. We haven't found that guy. Or we just haven't given that guy who may be that guy a chance yet at that Sunday roll, right? Maybe you tried Griffin Herring there as a third starter. He's been your best pitcher of the last month. Yeah. You know, I gave his numbers on uh, last Friday. I don't have them on top of my head, but his last seven outings have been really good. Like, really good. Maybe you try Kate Anderson, right? I know he's a freshman, and I know you may be a one-trick pony right now with this fastball, but if you're losing and you're not winning these games and you're getting 10-run ruled on Sundays, let's let one of your talented guys who's a freshman develop Right? Let him learn how to pitch in the SEC on these starting, if he's going to be a starter for you. Maybe, because there's other, the other side's not working. I'm not telling Jay how to do his job because he's way better at it than I am. He's getting paid a whole hell of a lot of money to coach, and he won a national championship, and I have, I have never coached a college baseball team in my life. I'm just talking about like, what I see from the, side, from, the, from, the, from the stands and as a player. Listen, in 2011, we had an all-freshman rotation for part of the year. Then we threw Ben Ossip in there, who was a senior, but Gosman was throwing on, on Saturdays. And Gosman struggled early. And then he kept going, he kept going, he kept going, then really started figuring out. I think he ended up with like a three and a half as a freshman. That's pretty good, right? And so you have got to give these guys a little bit of an experience of starting if, if you plan on starting them in the future. And I don't know what the thought process is of, of not having Griffin. If he likes Griffin piggybacking Holman or whatever, because that's worked the last you know two times he's done it. But, I mean, man, he's been your best guy. He has been. I, like, you, like you said, one-trick pony or not, I would rather put some of my more talented guys who I know is going to compete, who I know is going to go out there and throw strikes and let them figure it out from that spot. For me – I don't know why, but for me, I, I don't understand how we go a weekend like that. Well, well a couple weekends, honestly. And I know he threw the weekend before, but where we see so many just not competitive pitches being thrown right. and one of our more competitive guys not see the field in like real crunch time. I got to have Cade Anderson finding a spot on the weekend. It just, to me, has to happen. Like that guy has got to be able to pitch on the weekend at some point. And I I love the idea of Griffin being able to either piggyback and or kind of come in and be the stopper. But if we take him out of the role that he is right now, like if you don't pitch him on Friday, for, on Thursday, Thursday, do you win? Right. If you pitch him on Sunday and you don't pitch him on right. Thursday, do you win? If you pitch him on Sunday, does he hold it off long enough for them to actually – Like I don't know where that goes. Right. So it's like, okay, if we can piggyback him, great. Well, then why is the Kate Anderson not throw all weekend? He's got to be in there somewhere as well. And that's, for me, like, that's, I'm going to, I would die on the hill if I'm Jay. Like I said, you, I don't coach. You don't coach. I'm not in that clubhouse. We're just day. talking. We're just talking. Yeah. But if I'm going to die on the weekend where we're going to be beat, I'm going to throw Kate Anderson as well. Yeah. I, I'm gonna, I, I got I to gotta run him out there. And this point. is no slight to Javen Coleman. Javen's got good stuff. He just walks too many guys. Yeah, it's not a, it's not, it's, it's not, not it's we not call a, it, a, call a spade a spade, man. Like at the end of the day, you can't expect to put out great numbers when you are giving that many free passes away. And I think he would sit here and tell you the same thing. It's not, we're not going to slight him. We're not going to say he's bad, but I think he needs to understand. I have to start attacking hitters. I have to start giving myself a chance to expand the zone. I don't care who you are. You could throw 120. And if I'm in two, oh, three, one counts over and over and over again, somebody's going to start squaring me up. Yeah. Somebody will. Right. It's just that simple. Right. And if you're not separating yourself offensively, when they square it up, it's going to be in the eighth inning on a, in a one run game. And it's going to be, damn, they haven't done that all game, but they did it. Right. It's a ticking time bomb. And that's just the way baseball works. Now, to get out of that, it's not all doom and gloom, right? Three and nine, that's not great. Not great at all. But, but you have the opportunity. Listen, out of those nine losses, mm -hmm. how many of those losses do you think could have gone the other way? I'm, right? I'm going to say conservatively three. Yeah, but say off the top of my head, no, I'm off the top of my head, four to five. I would think. Yeah, but I'm going to say conservative. If we just yeah. say three of those go the different way, what's that math, Lloyd? I'm going to put you on the spot. Eight, you're, seven, six. You're nine and three. So that's 12 games. Three and you nine, you'd be six, six and, and six. six. 
conservatively six and six in conference. That's right in the middle of where you need to be. Okay? You're not f- that far off. If you were getting blown out every game, that's one thing. But you're not. So now you've got to figure out as a team – what do we need to do to prove to ourselves that we can win these close games? And the only way you do that is to win them, it's to, just to win games. And however it, however it is you need to win it, you win it. Now, the other question, the other side of it is the lineup side, right? You're, you, you hit. I was a hitter, right? It's not easy being bounced in and out, as, especially as a young guy, right? And I'm not saying that's the reason, but – you know, you have three guys right now hitting over 300. 321, Tommy White's hitting 321. Milam's hitting 308 with five extra base hits. And Travinsky's hitting 304. Bingham's right underneath to a 295. Okay? So, and out of those, all three of those guys, like, they're playing every day. But then you have a revolving door of about four or five other guys. And I mean, Here's do my, you need do you need them to play more to get more to yeah, get more so, experience to get more at bats to get into rhythm? Like, what's here's my question and what I kind of wonder when it comes to those guys. So we can we can all agree that last year's team was really really experienced, correct? Yep, that's fair to agree with. Yep, right, Lloyd. Yes, that's what seems to be. Okay. That's what carried. Them. So when you have really experienced guys, in my opinion, is on the same team is how you're able to move guys around a little bit more and they kind of know what is going on and what to expect and they kind of know each other. This group hasn't played together that much. This group has a lot of guys that right. have not played a full season. Right. Much even much less even played a full season together, if that makes any sense. This group, it's hard to understand what you're being asked to do when maybe one day you're hitting in front of Tommy, you may get pitched one day, you may get pitched one way, and then the next day, no matter what the out result of the day before was, you're hitting five spots lower and behind Bear Jones or behind Travinsky and, I, and understanding, well, what are they going to try to do to me now that these guys are in front of me and what, what's going on? It's kind of hard. And that may be a little advanced anyway for a college hitter, but you also know what else is advanced is not understanding, like, why am I in? Why am I out? Why am I up? Why am I down? How do I move? Where do I go? Do I need three today to stay here? Oh, I only got two. I'm do dead. I go here? I'm, I, I, I'm, like, I'm, dead. I'm not saying that's exactly what they're thinking. But you don't I – don't, I don't know, and it seems to me that, it's, it, that these guys are not catching a rhythm, and it's like there's so much going on and so many guys trying to prove themselves and so many guys trying to be the guy – that maybe all of that is what's keeping the synergy off of this thing. You know what I mean? And that's that's something I'm not in the building. I'm not around them every day. I can't tell you how they're feeling. I can't tell you what they look like when they walk in the building. I can't tell you what they look like after they see the lineup card and, and where the facial or, or body expression goes. I can't tell you that. Jay can, right? But from the outside trying to look in, that's what it seems to be very, very hard for this group to actually really catch it and keep going because it seems like these guys just don't know what their role is yet and where to be and what they're right. being asked to do and all of that kind of stuff. It, they should have by now, right? You would think that at this point tax in the day, year, right? That's, yes. what, that's what Skip says, by tax day. But I think that's a... Well, you, by tax day, you usually have a lot more uh, things going the same way. Well, that's what you're saying. By tax day, you need to know where your lineup is. Yeah. Yeah, that's where... We talked about that at the beginning of the year, too, before this season even Midway kicked off. We were, we were saying, like, look, they have a lot of guides that can play, but... <laughs> I, I think that y'all could speak to this more than I could, but I know that there's a certain feeling of when you go to the ballpark and you're, like, sprinting to go check the lineup card, you don't know if you're going to be in it or not, then it's hard to be, like... Locked to, in and know. It's hard to be consistent when there's no consistency. Hey, we, had, we you remember when we had a conversation with Drew? I'm not keep saying Drew. I don't know why I keep saying Drew. Josh Pearson. And Josh talked about Milan playing second base, and Josh talked about, I know he's playing. Yeah. Right? That's kind of a thing, like, and it's hard for guys to understand where they are when you don't know no. where you are. And it's hard to be positive every time you go up or show up for a baseball game. You're like, I hope I'm in the lineup. Well, oh, I'm not in the lineup. Oh, I'm in the lineup today. And like you said, if I don't get three hits today, maybe I won't play tomorrow. And this is not an excuse. But it's hard to it's hard to stay right. positive whenever right. you're like, I don't it's hard not to wear that on it's your hard, face. Right. Especially uh, when there's so many guys. Sure. They're all looking where, at each other like yeah, it's like, like minor are, are you the guy? Are you the guy? Are you the guy? For sure. Like 
We're not saying this as an excuse. We're saying this as the reality of it, right? People are probably listening in, in, in the chat. I don't know what's going on in the chat right now, but they're probably saying, they well, uh, they've, they've, they're recruited here. They've got to be ready to play. It doesn't Mike, happen that They way. said Mikey's off the perks in the chat with the positivity. <laughs> Take your own trucks. <laughs> I wish I was right now. <laughs> I mean. I'll take one. Um, but, like, I'm not being – there's a lot of problems going on. I'm not saying that this is bad. I mean, this is good. I'm not saying that they're going to get out of it. I'm saying that it's not over, right? But it shouldn't also, be this bad. No, it should not be. But at the same time, when you say, okay, well, these guys need to be ready when their opportunity presents itself. Yeah, that's for sure, right? Well, Larson has been pretty ready, right? He's hitting 353 with, you know, he didn't have a lot of at-bats, but two home runs. He had, he had three hits in uh, the second game of the series. Like, I don't care how young they but, are. But, 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 but. Larson is one that hasn't done what? He hasn't played, right. really, pretty much ever. He's only only come off the bench pretty much the whole time. Right. So he does know what, where he's at. I need to I need to go make a spot for myself. Well, that's, but that's my point, though. So, so but not everybody can do that. He's super talented. No, 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 no. The, the point I'm making is, is Larson isn't in, out, up, down. And he's a bench guy in his mind right now. He's telling himself, I need to well, go make a spot. He did start the second. That's my point, though. He, he's but gotten how many away. starts does he have and how many games have they played? He probably has He has less six. than 10 starts. Yeah. He's a bench he has guy. seven starts. So I know, in I'm his mind, so, I know, so what I'm saying is, in his mind, he knows where he is. I need to get off from being a bench guy. The guys that have a lot of starts, that are going in and out, that are going up and down, they don't know that yet. That's what I'm saying. Well, I, no, I understand that. There's not a ton of guys. They don't have a guy on the bench right now outside of the starts, whatever, that have more than 10 starts on the bench. But recently in the SEC play, he's been revolving in a lot more, right? He's been trying to get different people because nobody is really doing anything. We've seen Neil starting right. We've seen, you know, Larson have seven starts. We've seen these other guys Queen, come up. Bing, Bingham. Yeah, like we've seen all, this, all these combinations. I think you just pick – you pick the nine, and well, you say, these are the nine. You have maybe one extra, two extra guys that you do. So you let, me, mix in. let me, that's what I'm trying to basically tell you. Because who are the other guys that have about as many as bats as Larson? Okay, so Larson's got 34. Malazzo's got 34. How long has Malazzo been here? Okay, next Six guy. Six years. Next guy. Okay, Jake Brown's got 40. He's another freshman, right? Right. Okay. Right. And he Jordan started Fry's the year got, where? And right. Okay. Ethan Fry's got 43. How long has he been here? Two years, yeah. right? Yeah. My, my point is... Is Larson is the one that knows I'm not a starter. I need to go make something out of it. And my point is, all of this up and down, in and out, is coming from a lot of guys who have seen themselves in purple and gold for a while, who have seen themselves in the lineup. And it's not literally just the, the reserve players I'm talking about. I'm talking about everybody in the lineup moving all over and doing all of this and all of that. Guys are trying to, to, to find a, some comfortability because they don't really know where they are. Larson's the one with the least amount of time spent in that jersey. Larson and Jake Brown. Right. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with yeah. that. But, you know, you have Kling's been in and out. Keep him in the lineup. I don't give a shit. Keep him in the lineup. He had two doubles this weekend. Keep him in there. You're going to be our center fielder. You go out there every day, and you go play. Right? Did, hey, Larson, you've earned what? I was going to say that you can't play Larson. No, you can. You don't have to play. Larson hasn't played center when he started, except for yeah. that one time. But yeah. they put Bingham in center, yeah. and they put Larson in the corners. Right, but you want Bingham in the lineup. Okay. So I look, think that, but, but so, who, so I think you put Larson in right, you put Bingham in left, and you put Kling in center. That's your best outfield. It's your best defensive outfield. It's your most athletic outfield. You have Larson, who's earned the right to get more opportunity. Right, what you're saying. Dude, Larson, right? I mean, by, by far, Larson is the one that is kind of showing up right now and – Making it hard to say, right. let me pencil him in as a reserve. And, and you know what? Go through his ups and downs, right? Kling, two doubles, looked better, right? Looked better this past weekend against a, a good staff. Yeah. Give him an extra opportunity to say, go out there and keep doing this. Keep, ride that momentum. Bingham has been solid. You keep him out there and left, right? Then you figure out, okay, Travinsky's going to be our DH maybe. You put him as DH. If you feel like there's a nasty ride and you don't like him, Pearson, DH. Right, that's your ten guys. That's your extra. Pearson's your extra guy. You can throw him in in the outfield. You can throw him in as a DH. You have Neil behind the plate as the everyday starter. Travinsky as the DH, and you have Malazzo as the backup catcher and come in a defensive replacement. Right now, you can mix in Fry every now and then if you need a pinch hit at bat or something. Right now, but say these are the guys that are going to go. And if you think Fry is better than some of the other ones, then you throw him in there too. 
You just got to have a guy. You have to have some continuity. So, and, to your point. Yeah, and then for me, and like, here's the thing too. I think just so this can be and, understood, this isn't a this isn't a bashing of the team. No, I know. And this isn't a bashing of Jay's decisions because that's what coaching is: is figuring out what's the best way to do it. And believe it or not, like it's like we all know, there's still time left. So I'm sure Jay is doing exactly that, coaching and putting it together. But as we see it from the outside looking in right now, this is what we see. Right. This is how we feel about it. I don't. Yeah. We don't know the details. Yeah. Of what's going on behind the scenes. I'm just looking at it. And look, I saw. I probably sound like a fan. I am a fan. But I'm looking at it as okay. Every time this kid gets in there, he does well. And then early in the season, you can use the excuse, "Well, he's a freshman. He's not ready. We need him to get experience. All this stuff." Okay, fine. Well, you're three and nine now. So screw the experience. Let's throw the guy out there who's actually putting together some pretty decent at-bats, right? And he was a bench player. You know how hard it is to come off the bench and have quality at-bats, right? One or two at-bats every other day. He's walking. He's getting some hits off the bench. Like, that's hard to do. Yeah. That earns you extra A-Bs. Maybe he starts to get some extra at-bats. Maybe he's a spark plug for a few games and gets everybody else rolling. You can't rely on a freshman all year unless he's, you know, hitting 25. Unless he does what Tommy White did his freshman year. But, like, maybe for two or three or four games, he gets real hot. All of a sudden, he's coming up with these big hits. Now everybody else starts to roll because hitting is contagious. And now he slides into the role that he was supposed to have as a freshman. Yeah. You know, you need somebody to step up and say, all right, enough is enough. And you want it to be a veteran guy, but sometimes the freshmen or young guys take advantage of an opportunity. Some guys, they're the ones that spark the rest of the squad. spark the rest of them to let go. In 2009, we were kind of going through, you know, also, Nola kind of sparked it. Yeah. Not offensively, defensively. We didn't need any help offensively. We just needed the help defensively, right? Spark, right? You just have it, – it's – but you just and, don't and know look, where it's going to come and, from. And, and, and to be fair, like, you also got to give Coach Maneri some of that, that credit in the sense of, I know this is the spark I need to make. This is the move I need to make to light a, a fire under everyone's ass to make them understand, hey, things need to be different, Yeah. right? So I'm going to put him here, and I'm going to move this guy here, and I'm going to move that guy here, and I'm going to take that guy and put him on the bench, right? So understanding, and I, like I said, that's why Jay's a coach. He will be making moves. I, w- I would assume there's no way he's going to allow us to keep going the same way. There's time, but we can speak about the things we see and understand that it ain't all doom and gloom, and it's not all dead. But like I said, the one thing that concerns me is allowing yourself to get ten run ruled the amount of times that they have. That's right. very concerning. Right, and that and that is you know, look maybe not maybe it doesn't work. Maybe you put a guy in, you give him a shot, and it doesn't work. Then it doesn't work. But at least you gave it a shot, right? So there you just you would imagine you're gonna see some shuffling going on with some what they've been doing. No, I'm not talking about shuffling as far as hey you're in you're out you're in you're out like. Shuffling as in, hey, a, th- a shuffle of philosophy or shuffling of, hey, these are the guys that we're going to run with for a little bit. You go, hey, here's a new starter as a number three guy and not we're not going to Johnny Holstaff it. You know, maybe. I don't know. But it hasn't worked yet. Yeah. You know, and so there's got to be some sort of change, I would imagine. Now, like I said, I'm never coached. I don't know. You know, I could be completely wrong, completely off base. Maybe behind the scenes these guys stink as people and, you know, Jay's lost confidence, whatever. I don't think that's the case, right? There's a whole bunch of reasons why this could happen, but being three – oh, God bless you. Bless you. I'm allergic to losing. Need, need yeah. a mute button over there. Being I forgot three, which being one three was and nine, <laughs> Being three and nine, SC is not – it's not it. Well, and that's the – to your point, I guess, is that something that you would want to see is, all right – Everything's we've all we've been trying to like play matchmaker with the lineup. Would you just want to see the same lineup three times? How many times have you seen the same lineup back to back games? Look and look and not even lineup, order of the lineup. You right. I mean, like not people in the lineup, order of it yeah. too. You know what I mean? Like, it's just that's where the for me that's the continuity I kind of want to see. There has to be, there should be, a certain amount of guys where you're just kind of used to seeing them in the same spot, and there really isn't much. Of that movement there, and we haven't seen much of that yet this year. Like we haven't found a leadoff hitter yet, right? We haven't found one yet. Yeah, or someone. I mean, maybe you have. You haven't put him there enough. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you haven't. He hadn't. He hadn't felt confident enough to have a guy in the leadoff spot ever. To run game. him out there. Yeah. yeah. And you just you know, 
I mean, Bingham's been leading off for the majority of the year. At yeah, least. but then, but then, who, let off, then who let off on Saturday? Right. That's, well, that's that, what I'm wondering <laughs> so, why you would that's change that. I guess because of he's shown a little bit more pop. So you're try, what he's trying to do, I guess, in my mind, is find a way to put up runs that aren't just solo shots. He wants people like, okay, Bingham, you're doing great at leadoff, but we almost need you to bat further back in the lineup in case there's people on base because you showed a little bit more pop than we thought I mean, you I had. Know, I know what he's trying but, to do. But, 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 but then if that's the case, if you're thinking of it that way, well, then who's getting on base for Tommy? Exactly. So then is that the move? You're like, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, your just... two top home run hitters are Tommy White and Jared Jones. Both have 11. Yeah. Right? And then trevinci has got eight. Yeah. And Bingham then has got eight. Yep. So those are your four top hitters. If you don't have guys getting on in front of the guys hitting 11 – What's the point, right? Just like a bunch of solo shots. You know, then you got then if then if you're trying to mix it up, and nobody's getting on, they're hitting the solo shot. Then all of a sudden, a couple other guys, now Stravinsky hits a solo shot, and then now Bingham's hitting seven on, and he hits a solo shot. So like, the ultimate rally killer. You know, you just need to have. I don't. I don't like I said. I don't have an answer to it. I'm just talking about what, what I'm seeing, and I would like to see some roles defined. And look, maybe he's not. Maybe these guys haven't shown him enough confidence to, to define them, but. Sometimes you just got to say, I mean, you got to think about it, right? Do you're, it. You're, it's your role. You're 12 games in the conference right now. You got 18 games left in conference right now, barring any kind of rain out or anything like that, right? You need to get to about, what, 15 wins, 14, 15 wins. So you need 12 to 13 more, 12 to 13 more wins for the rest of the time. So you're 18, that means you got to go, what, 12 and 6, 11 and, I mean, 13 and 7 through the no, rest of the conference? You have 18 games left, right? 12 so, yeah. and 6. 12 and 6 would be 18. Yeah. Um, you know, 13, 11 five. and 7. 13 and 5, 11 and 7, somewhere in there. You have to start stringing wins together 14, very soon. 15, six, 14, 15, 16 wins in conference. And may, now 12 teams get in, so 13 will get you into the tournament. Yeah, but, 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 you, but, you, but then you're putting yourself in a spot where For you sure. have to win the tourney to, sure. to get into the real dance. So it's that's not where you you don't want to go into the SEC tournament thinking one game. I have to win this tournament to get into the tournament. That's not this ain't the the conference USA tournament, right? Like you can't two lane your way into that thing. That's it's gonna be real tough right. to do that. That's a mini Omaha. You can't twenty twenty three yourself the way two lane did, thinking you're gonna do that with the SEC tournament to get into the tournament. Right. That's really really tough to do. So you need to get to that 14, 15, 16 win sweet spot, and you're putting yeah. yourself to where. That's the number you got to get to now. And doing that without sweeping or or saying I'm gonna have to sweep, sweep, sweep. That's so hard, have, man. So let's just say let's just go conservatively, right? And it's gonna be very hard to do. But you got six series left. If you win every series, <clears throat> you're twelve and six. That yeah. puts you at fifteen and fifteen. Yeah. Okay. That'd be great. It's gonna be hard to do. That's gonna be very hard to do because you got on the road at Tennessee, then you got AM at home, and AM's top five team in the country. Just for and just for cyborgs, just so people like Tennessee, don't know. Tennessee, Missouri. Yeah, yeah, but I'm talking about like yeah. the but Missouri just come off a sweep. You know yeah. what I mean? Like just the cyborg too. Mikey talked about the 2010 season. In 08, we were six eleven and one going into the last month, and in eleventh place, I believe, in the SEC. Right? So I'm just to give you an idea of what kind of number. So that means there's two more series. You got to win both of those series, basically, to get to that spot. To say, okay, I'm in a spot to, to make a run. I'm in a spot to, to still be in play to get to, the, to get to the postseason. That's where you've put yourself at. Your back to me right now is without a doubt against the wall. I thought last weekend was the most important series because – because last weekend would have give it would have given you, you a little pressure. breathing room. Yeah, you could have gone on the road to Tennessee and maybe gotten swept and been like, or lost. The but series. we're not done. Or lost the series. Or somewhere in the road lose a series that you're not supposed to lose. You could have done that. Not winning last series, you have put your back against the wall. Now. And we said before this, before last weekend, you had to go three and three in these two weekends to feel like okay, we're ten and five, we're five and ten in conference, right? To feel like oh, we have. A that shot. was to win conference too. That was to get back into the spot to really yeah. like. But like you go five and ten with fifteen games left, you put yourself in a position to say, okay, I can get to fifteen and fifteen very reasonably. Yeah. Right. Doesn't change. 
you went one and two. Now you got to go two and one on the road. Yeah. And look, maybe going on the road and winning a big series on the road is going to be the thing that they need to jumpstart them, right? Yeah. Only takes one win against a team and in a situation that has been going the opposite. And we've talked about that. I thought maybe Thursday was going to be that when they got the break, but they were never behind. There you go. That's right? that's that's kind of what it yeah. was. Like they never got in a situation where it was, oh shit, it's happening again. Yeah. They were they were up nine nothing and they were up nine six and up and they won ten to six. Like it never got to that spot where I need you to have the RBI single that scores two that puts us up one. Yeah. That had I need you to have yet. the opposite field home run in the bottom of the top of the eighth inning to get, go up. Yeah. Right. And then I need the pitching staff to go in there and, and have a first and third with one out and get a double play and then you go and you put an insurance run. That's what Vanderbilt did in the second game and that's why they won. Yeah. Right? Had Vanderbilt not got the insurance run, LSU would have felt a lot better about themselves going into the bottom of the ninth of tying the game. Two runs is a lot harder to get than one. Right? They LSU needs an opportunity or needs a, needs a guy to come up like Thompson did with the bases loaded double against Tennessee. Yep. In a big moment and a situation where it's like, damn, we need it. Like when that happens, you're going to like I I hope they pan to the dugout when that happens. Hope it's on national TV. And you look at the dugout and you're like, wow, they needed that. Like, you yeah. can see it in their face. Like, it only takes one of those moments, and then all of a sudden you're like, okay, we can do it. We're not cursed. And then they start rolling. Now, they got to do it, right? I know I'm being positive, but that is the reality of it. I've seen it happen. only reason I'm being positive is because I've seen it happen. You've been a part of it. Yeah. You've done it. Yeah. You know? And so, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, you have got to have the belief in yourself as an urgency to do it. Like you have to start playing with yeah. urgency. And urgency has to show up the minute you tow it up. Like, watch them play this midweek game. Just because I've been in situations like this. Like, this is where you need to start. You have to kick your game up to another level. You have to kick your competition level up to another level. Right? Like you have to start playing with that urgency. And let's be honest, you're just not gonna find it starting Friday night. It's right. gotta start this week. It's got to start this midweek game to where you start playing and acting like a different team because if you keep playing and acting like the team that we've seen over the past month, it's you're, you're going to be going, hey, it's going to be one, two, three, summer ball at the end of the, the season. <laughs> like that's, that's what you're heading towards. Yamaha. Yeah, seriously. seriously. Um, okay. Put well, your coach well, – go ahead. I was just going to say because when you look at what – you talked about how important the Vanderbilt series was and not only the series but the first game – it feels like that they do have at least a plan for the first game, right? Where you go whole. Well, in. you give your ace. Yeah, and and then. Well, that's fine. Hearing. Everybody's got a plan A, but what happens when you can't do plan? Well, A? Well, no, <laughs> but you have to have. It seems like they would need plan A for a Saturday and a Sunday, and they don't have that. And if you take away your plan A, which is what going Holman Herring, and you want to throw him on a Sunday, that what does that do to your plan A? Because it feels like that's the only thing that's really working. So I, right I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think the plan is Holman Herring. I think the plan is Holman and Herring is the hot hand right now. So you're taking him in the games where you feel like you can win and you're in a position to win. And I think that's what they did. Problem is, is when that happens on Friday night and he can't go the rest of the weekend, then what do you have? So here's what I think. Because you made a good point. I like Kate Anderson throwing the third game. But if he doesn't want to put Kate Anderson there yet, I think he should, but if he doesn't want to put him there yet, I don't <laughs> mind Griffin Herring playing the role of Coleman. Now, not going to be Lewis Coleman. There's only one Lewis Coleman. But playing the role of, hey, because, hey, if Vanderbilt doesn't score six runs, mm -hmm. if they're winning, if LSU is up 9-3, even 9-4, Griffin Herring doesn't come in the game. Right? Griffin Herring came in the game when the game started getting closer. Well, how close did it get to? 9-6. 9-6. Go so, ahead and finish. And I'll so, I'll say that back. He came in with it being 9-4, to four, but then the error happened and they scored the runs and he came in. I think he gave up one run, but it wasn't his run, right? Yeah. So, and the only so reason he, he stopped it. Right. I, and I guess the only reason why I'm asking that question is because that, to me, goes back to the rest of that bullpen where you started the season with – um, let's see, Allure, you started the season with an Ackenhausen, you started the season with the Gidry, you started the season with, I mean, at this point now, Thatcher Hurd. All of these guys were considered to be above Griffin in the pecking order, right? And the confidence wasn't in to put them in those spots. 
they need a Griffin at that spot. Right. So now the challenge to me should be to those guys is, can you fit the bill of what we brought you here to do? Because if we can, then maybe we didn't need to throw him in that spot. Or if we did choose to throw him in that spot, we knew you could get the job done on Friday, which, which was Friday and Saturday this week, which those jobs were not done. Right. You get what I'm saying? Right. That, that's kind of got to be the mindset of the team now. Yep. No, it's – and look, if you don't play – if you don't have to throw him on the Friday, on the first game, right, then you say, okay, you maybe he starts. On Sunday. Right. Yeah, maybe he starts, right? But if you don't want that, if you do want to have him be able to throw Friday or Saturday and you don't say, I, I'm more confident with that, Kate's got to start Sunday. I just you have to give him a shot. I just got to see it, right? Like, I mean, that's that's my rotation. I just, if, if, I just if, for me, let's keep. I, I would like to see Griffin start. I just, but let's see Griffin stays in the pen. For me, he needs to start. Outside of stuff, when I watched the way he straight up competed, when I watched the way like the moxie he had on the mound, when I watched him pitch the way he pitched at Southeastern, to me that says that's the formula for this kid. He needs to start. This kind of stuff and this kind of competitiveness needs to be finding his way in my weekend right. rotation. And to me. And here's the other thing, and like I understand trust, right? I understand Jay trust Ackenhausen a lot. Mm-hmm. Fine. I trust him too for two innings. Right? Like he had two and a third innings pitched on game two. He gave up three runs. Two of those runs came on the home run. Yeah. In his third inning. Third inning. So But let's be honest, dude. Like that's I would I would go to say if we really put the numbers on it, that is a ton of relievers. Because what ha, what, what are you usually right, getting? That's what, that's what, what are saying. you usually getting to that third inning is when it comes to pitch you count get wise? The, you get and you get the rotation. Well, you, of the unless lineup. you've gone perfect, you're getting the rotation of the lineup, or you're getting two or above that fifty pitch mark where right. If you were, that's pretty much your limit because if every reliever could do that, then you're basically on the borderline of being a starter. Yeah. Right. And it's like, all right, if he's not going to be that, that's where we're we're taxing him right here, right? And if we're taxing him right here, and he's not getting over the hump, then maybe we found where the hump should be. Right. Which mm-hmm. Should be at the end before that, you know. Right. And look, and because he's, if you look at his numbers, I, I don't know. I don't have. I wish we had an advanced statistic, statistician. Statistician, how do you say that? Statistician? Sure. Advanced stat guy. Yeah. That's the one. Yeah, that guy. Mm -hmm. Right? An advanced stat guy, if we had him on our payroll, which we do not, I would ask him, hey, can you go and look at all of the outings that he has thrown less than two innings? And what's his ERA? And then what's his ERA when he gets past that two inning mark or pitch mark, whatever it is, right? Because if you look at what he's done, he strikes out a whole bunch of guys. Right, and so he's been effective. Mm -hmm. Look at the Florida game. He was unbelievably effective. He gave up the hit in the ninth, and he gave up the home run. But that's after three innings, right? That's past the two inning mark. Yep. And so it's just he's. I I trust him. I don't. I don't think he's a bad pitcher. I just. I think maybe he's. It's too long. Too many times. A little too long. Too long. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. Um. So, okay, so back and that to- leash may be once again. So you got to say that leash may be because I'm not trusting the other guys right. to come mm-hmm. in and that, do it behind you. That was going to be my question. If you only go two innings, who's the next guy? And it feels like they tried to find that with Cam Johnson, who continues to come in. And I mean, there, there's no really other way to put it. To struggle. Like it's, he's he would be a guy that you would like to be able to put in there and him eat up two innings. And maybe you find it with Newt because it certainly isn't now. You did. I didn't get to watch Newt throw the inning he threw. You say he looked good. I know it was his first outing. I won't say. So. Yeah, I mean, like you gotta understand. Put it in a you know a vacuum of what actually is going on with him. So I'm not gonna sit here and say good, but the stuff came out easy. He looked comfortable on the mound. Now it's getting a feel of getting back into the zone. Um, the fastball missed high a lot. I know he gave up the homer, but I feel like that's a guy that you know you go you go the next day and you you're asking him. Hey, how did you feel? If you come out of that and you felt great and you're not sore and something's not hurting, I took that as a positive sign of where, yeah. where they are. Yeah. I took that as somebody who seemingly in my eyes made a step because he hasn't pitched it forever. Look, and I want to I want to say this too. It's very hard to repeat when you win a national championship. It's very hard to do. Not many teams have done it. 
look, I mean, women, the women's basketball team, the Elite Eight, like it was a struggle. They had their struggles this year, right? Talent, very talented. Some would say maybe more talented than last year's team. On paper. On paper. But it's very hard to repeat. When you're chasing something and you're pushing forward to go get something, I don't want to say it's easier, but it's it's a lot easier to stay narrow focused on where you're trying well, to go. The experience of it too, man. Like there's just so many guys that didn't feel themselves embarrassed by getting bounced out of Southern Miss in two games. Right. But there's not many guys on this team that right. felt that. There's not many guys on this team that know what that's like and said, you know what? I'm not doing that again next year. There's guys that haven't been in that spot. Right. They don't know what that's like. They just, you know, this is hey, this is this is SEC baseball. Hey, you come to LSU. You have all the glitz and glamour. You have all the social media stuff. All, and it's all great. And you, it's well-deserved. It's earned. Right? And so, it's. and I'm not saying these guys came in here thinking, oh, we're going to do it again. It's very easy. No, because they know it's hard. These guys have been around. Some of these guys have been here for those, those moments. Right? They know how difficult it is to make a run. And so, they'd not, they're not coming here thinking this way. But subconsciously... Right? Everybody else is now really chasing you and coming after you. The target's really on your back because you're the defending champs. Right? Still ranked in the top five. Not ranked anymore, but ranked in the top five, so people are chasing you. Now, you can go back to being that person of saying, all right, I'm going to go and hunt you. I'm no longer the hunted. I'm going to go and hunt you. And, you know, maybe that's what they needed. Maybe they needed their backs against the wall, and maybe they needed to feel a little desperate to say, all right, we got nothing else. We're either going to fight our way out of this thing or we're going to go down as a, as, a, as a very bad season. You know, and, uh, I mean, look at Florida, man. Florida's been very rank, high, ranked very highly after losses. I mean, they had 11 losses going into this weekend, ranked in the top five. Yeah. And they get sweeped at, sweeped, swept at Missouri, or against Missouri. I don't know if it was at Missouri or not. At Missouri, yeah. Was that Missouri? Mm-hmm. Gets swept at Missouri, which LSU has to go to. Mm-hmm. And now they're 17 and 14 overall. So nothing's it, a given it, in this it league. It can man. change every week. Nothing's a given in this league, and you got to show up, pitch in, and pitch out. And you have to understand the urgency that these games have to be played with. And Florida was a team that had a mass exodus of guys, even though they have some some of their key guys back. LSU is a team that had a mass exodus of guys, even though they had some key guys back. And these guys are having to learn this stuff on a fly. And it's how quickly can you put this stuff together? How quickly can you understand that I can't give this pitch or this at bat away in the fourth because it probably means a lot, right? Understanding those and those things and, and bringing that kind of urgency and getting to those things, that's how you start getting over the hump. And that's where you need to see this team kind of graduate themselves to. Part of the uh, comparison I was making earlier, um, I don't think people realized how invaluable those veteran guys were, right? Even if you're not an everyday guy. Because I look back to when we won it, and the only reason I'm saying keep going back is because it's a, it's a very good comparison. I go back to when we won it, we won it, and we had Jared, DJ Mayhew, Lewis Coleman, Buzzy Heidel, Nick Pontiff. Chad Jones. I mean, Chad, but Chad was, you know, this guy's on the baseball team for multiple years. Those five guys, Chris McGee, Nolan Cain, like, We've had we had seven or eight guys. I'm probably missing some. We had seven or eight guys on that team leave. Sean Chinko. I say Sean. Ryan Schimpf. Ryan Schimpf. Right? Like these guys were on that team. Derek and left. Hellenihi. Derek Hellenihi, right? A veteran team. We had four year we had four year seniors, fifth year seniors. We had first rounders as juniors. We had second rounders as a draft eligible sophomore, two year starter. An ace, a guy who tried to get kicked off the team, begged his way to stay <laughs> back on, and ended up being the SEC pitcher of the year. My point in saying all that is we had guys on that team that went through some shit. And they got out of it, made a run, came back, and was able to help us young guys 
help guide us young guys to that championship. Then those guys leave, right? You have some veterans still on the team. Micah Gibbs is a junior. Anthony Renato is a junior. Austin Ross is a junior. I'm a sophomore. Like, you have some of these guys there, but you didn't have... Y'all never went through that struggle before. Didn't go through the struggle, and we didn't have the the guys in the locker room that were like Buzzy, and were like McGee, and were like Pontiff, where, hey, shit went wrong. You could go in the dugout, and these guys are going to either be able to cheer you up, they're going to put it in perspective, or coach is going to be able to slide them in, and they were going to be able to do it for a game but, or two. But let me ask you, where did that come from? From the failures and the Those guys had gotten no their doubt. teeth kicked in. I had gotten my teeth kicked in. We had been beat badly, embarrassed, right? And so we understood what that side of it looked like and felt like. These young guys on this team, they don't know that. The guys that just got here last year, they don't know that. And that was what I talked about going into this year. There's, there's a lot of guys that's putting on purple and gold this year that didn't go through the purple and gold struggle. So they are coming into a whole bunch of love without understanding, hey, this is how it is when it's bad, right? And for better or for worse, like you're, you're basically getting the reap, the success of people that played before you and not understanding there's a different level of attention. Easy. There's a different level of urgency. There's right. a different level of preparation. There's a different level of, I'm coming here for broke today because I know what it was like mm -hmm. feeling the way I felt last year and or the day before and or the last time we played them. That's the understanding that they're not having right now. And to kind of like put a bill on this thing, part of that is the new culture of college baseball and college sports, mm -hmm. right, where guys can leave. Guys, there is, there is the transfer portal is always open, right? Passion's Some guys going to come in. There. Right, someone's going to come and get you, right? Like you can bring in new guys, and that's great. But the goal is to bring in the new guys. The, the goal is to bring in the I new guys. A, we need to get a counter in the corner of the screen five. board. Yeah. <laughs> Every show. I don't have to I was trying to put a given. It didn't work out. <laughs> My, the, the, the Mikey's blooper counter. Yeah. I like the ticker. The goal. <laughs> you and Brazzle are keeping up with each other. Yeah. The goal is to bring in some of these guys to fill in the gaps. Right? And you gotta develop the young guys along the way, and you gotta have some veterans to help. Yeah. Now, if you don't have these veterans that are able to stay and help, that's a difference, right? And so, you know, look, you have some veteran guys. Travinsky is that guy. Yeah. Malazzo is that guy, right? But you don't have as many. This you team just is don't. every bit as as talented as they need to be. The bad part is, is in this league, especially in this league. Talent only is good. It's only going to get you so far. Yeah. You have to be able to bring more than talent to the table in this league. Um. Well, when you talk about the struggles that you, I think this is it, like you have to go through things. They're going through it right now. You're just hoping that you can learn throughout the season. At some point, you need something good to happen. And it felt like maybe the Vanderbilt win was going to be that. It wasn't. You continue to do the same thing that you've done kind of the all year, and so you would have to hope that. They figure out, like, I don't like this feeling at all. Yeah. What's on the other side? What do we have to do to fix it? Because yeah. Jay has tried everything. There's not a whole lot. There's not many more bullets in the chamber of how many things can I change. I've tried everything. Y'all, at some point, have to play better. Yeah, I agree. And like I said, that's, that's you have why to hate this feeling. To you have to I, hate this feeling every day you go. Yeah, that's why it's alarming to me because it's not like it's it's been sweep, sweep, sweep. They've gone into three different Sundays – with a chance to win the series and found themselves getting tenor and ruled in those Sundays. That has to feel like you got to sit back and be like, no, nah, I can't keep taking that. I'm not okay with that continuing to happen. I don't care what I have to do, but that can't happen. And, it's and we got to find a way to win those. It's almost the opposite where they get to Sunday and they're like, shit, this is what always happens on Sunday. Tenor and ruled. Now it's at home. Yeah. Twice. Twice. So I'm looking at the standings right now. LSU's three and nine, mm -hmm. Ole Miss is three and nine, Auburn's two and ten. Those are the last three teams in the SEC. Missouri's four and eight, Georgia's five and seven, Florida's six and six, South Carolina's six and six. The West is all kind of right in the middle, right? Tennessee seven and five, twenty six and six overall. You're going to Tennessee this weekend. Arkansas eleven and one, A and M eight and four. You got A mm -hmm. and M left. 
You got Alabama left. You got Ole Miss left. You're on the road to Tennessee, and you got Missouri, right? So my point in saying that is like, yeah, we are bad, and they are 3-9. and nine. You're playing teams that you have every bit of the ability to beat. Your two toughest conference opponents are going to be A&M, you get them at home, and this weekend at Tennessee. I also think, too, like, let's be honest, like, in this league, you may have a year where maybe one team goes with seven, eight, nine, ten losses. Everybody else is going to have ten plus. Yeah. So mm-hmm. with that being said, these teams got to have losses somewhere on the schedule. They're coming up. You might as well, you might as well clock in and try to be one of them losses for them. Exactly. Because that's where so, you're at. Here's the deal. <clears throat> and, I'm, look, and this is, I hate, Monero used to do this. He used to put the whiteboard up and he used to start counting wins. No, no. That's hard. Right? But you look at, actually, I'm not even going to pull up Tennessee. I'm gonna pull up. If the internet would do it, would work for me. I'm gonna pull up. Let's pull up. A and M. They're second second team in the West. You still gotta play them. They're 28 and four. They're one of the top teams in the country. They have to play Vandy this weekend. They're at Alabama. They play Georgia. They play LSU. They play at Ole Miss, and they play Arkansas at the at the end. Mm-hmm. Right. So their schedule is pretty favorable, I would, I would say, right? Arkansas is going to be tough, um, and Vanderbilt this weekend is probably their two toughest competition. I see anything can happen, right? But you go and you sneak a series against them, or you sneak a win against them, you're left with four, other, three other teams, four other teams that you have the same record or better than, mm-hmm. even at three and nine. Get right? you front loaded. So, sweeps, we don't like talking about them, but ain't not the question. You got to turn it, you got to figure it out, though. Here, it's not over. My point in saying this, it is not over with. If you go through, okay, let's go Tennessee, what's standing? Let's say you take one. With no, yeah, let's say you take two. Let's say you take, uh, no, oh, okay, okay, okay. Conservatively. Okay, conservatively. Through. You get one at Tennessee. You should be able to take two of three from Missouri, two of three from Auburn. You take one from A&M, two of three from Bama, two of three from Ole Miss. Where does that leave you? Well, you count that again. One, so you, from, one from Tennessee. Yes. Yeah, so you'd say you take one from – I'm going through the rest of the SEC yep. schedule. One from Tennessee, so you go one and two. You're at four. That just, would, just, just keep – I'm going to count the wins, and I'll, yeah, I'll be able to do That would be losses. four conference wins. Missouri, you take two. Six so conference six. wins. Auburn, two. Eight. Eight conference wins. A&M, one. Nine. Alabama, two. 11. Ole Miss, two. 13. There you go. That puts you at 13 and 17. That's not ideal. You're probably going to have to win one or two games in conference in a tournament. But that's saying you don't sweep anybody. Yeah. Right? Like, that's saying that. Or get swept. You, that's saying you don't get swept. But that's saying, I was also saying you don't sweep anybody, right? It's hard to sweep. It's hard to get swept. I've gotten swept once. But you'd have to imagine that there are some wins in the back end of this. Now, if we look up in three weeks, two weeks, and we are not winning series, then that's an issue. This is the first time. And I don't know how long that LSU's lost their first four conference series. And that's where I think Skip never did it, Smoke never did it, Maneri never did it. And when you look at what LSU has done, I'm not, and I don't mean that to blame coaches. I'm not saying I'm just saying errors. Just LSU like, has never done it. Yeah, I'm just saying errors of teams. I'm not blaming coaches by any means. No, like don't take that. It was just baseball's hard, dude. Yeah, don't misconstrue <laughs> what I'm saying there. Yeah. But I think that when you see, like, when you go through the LSU games and those second games of a series are where you, that's where you have to find the difference because you have, look at Vanderbilt. You blow a lead against Vanderbilt, lose 6-8. to eight. Arkansas, you almost took one where you went to extra innings on the second game of the series, you lose by two, 5-7. to seven. You go to Florida, you lost an in extra innings, 4-6. to six. Like, You're winning that game, too. Yeah. In the the, all, all, two of those three, you were winning. And that's where the problem is coming from is you have Gage Jump who's pitching just fine, but it's just that one more rotation of the ball that you have to be able to do to get a win, and they haven't been able to. We talked about learning how to win. It feels like they're very confident whenever they play the first week of, of the first game of a series. Like, they know what they have. Team looks better. And then when well, it gets shit, to, I would hope everybody's Yeah, confident. because you, <laughs> now it feels like a clean slate. So right. you're going to go out there and you're going to play well. you got no losses on the weekend. You win the first one, but then you get the first loss happens, and all of a sudden the doubt starts creeping back in. Yeah, that's where you like you almost have thrown every game 
three out of the window, but it shouldn't be that way where you're like, look, we just need to win one more game to take a series, and they're not able to get to that second win. It's like, all right, we're up one nothing. We have two games, and we need to take one. And they can't seem to mentally wrap their heads around, like, all right, even if you lose game two, you can still win the series in game three. And it's instead it's been, shit, we just, how'd we lose game two? Then you go into, like, shit, well, now we don't have any arms for game three. I don't know who we're going to throw. And they don't even show up at the ballpark. They, yeah. there has been a clo- there's been a close game on a game three on a Sunday in the SEC. They've, they've been boat raced. Every time. Arkansas mm-hmm. was probably the closest. That was the only one that didn't get 10 yeah, It's the only one that get 10 run. Seven to five to seven. No, that was I mean it was close. Yeah, but I mean shit. Four to twelve to two. Mississippi State, fifteen to five. Vanderbilt. Yeah. Thirteen to three. Things gotta change. Jay knows it. Team knows it. Guys know it. Like, we're not saying any, we're not giving them any. We're not. There's no special <laughs> sauce. No, no, but there's no. They're not hearing anything that they don't know about themselves. But you would hope. When you talk about like leadership on the team, I don't know where it comes from. You would imagine it would is, be. Uh, there's no rah rah leaders. Like that's not gonna do anything. Yeah. No. I, 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 like coming in there and like I'm not. I'm, I'm not saying you're saying that, but I'm saying like coming into the locker room, players only meetings. Rah rah. We're gonna do this one one for the Gipper type speech. That doesn't work. This is this is really the time where, and I have absolutely no clue. From the top to the bottom of that roster, could not listen to a single word we say, not listen to a single word they see on Tiger Droppings on they Twitter. To My point about. is, is all of that stuff. Take all of that and be like, "Yep, we deserve it all." But now is the time where we close doors, we stop listening, and we only look at each other and say, "Hey, what what are you gonna do?" And I got your back, and you got my back, and that's the only way we're getting out of this thing. It's the only way. Yeah. Not by pats on the back. Not by someone saying you ain't doing this. Not by being, hey, what, what are we going to do? How are we going to get on the other side of this? And that's how you get over this hump. 100%. Because what you saw last year was a lot of, you, you'd say it's not raw, raw, but it felt like there was a little bit more chemistry of like guys like skiing where they're doing like this could be stupid but they had like the shirts and things to look no that's camaraderie to. that's I mean, not that, that's, it doesn't feel like you that's see all any cool, of that but you had experience like, yeah it was you had guys that knew do when, guys, it, when they're down so. and it was, six to one and five, we got a chance and it was organic yeah. yes like that was his personality he did that from the beginning he established that from early on right and i'm not saying that nothing was established early the way you get these guys to rally around each other is somebody does something in a game to lift everybody up and everybody celebrates together. And then you just start feeling that feeling and you continually do that. That's, and it's not and, the solo home no. where in, a, in a tie game when there's no score on the board in the third. It's not the, hey, we're up 9 nothing. we just didn't give it away. Lead off it's got to come in a very crucial time of the game. Give me the three-run homer in the six. Give me the shutdown inning when you come out the bullpen or runners on second and third with one out and you don't give up a single run. It's got to be something shut down like that. It's got to be something that two, completely swings the momentum. Let me ask you this. 2008, what was the turning point game for y'all? When we went to Tulane. Before that, though, in Georgia, what, what did y'all do on that Sunday, right? We, we were up a lot, ended up giving up the lead, ended up going in extra innings, and we tied a team that we should have beat that day. Right, and then you go to the, tech, the Tuesday game. After you swept, you got swept against Georgia, right? Well, lost two and tied one. You lost two and tied one. Then you go to Tulane, and that's when everything flipped. And why did it flip? And we had a big moment in the game. We had, that's we were saying. not winning that entire game. We had someone step up big and give a big clutch performance in that game. And then things started turning. It takes prove it one. To you, prove it to yourself. It just takes one time. Because right? that, that's what you would think that every time that they've had an opportunity to do that, it's gone the other way. That's my point. That's my point. Right? Then like, it becomes your identity. Hey, one guy comes out of the bullpen and shuts him down. Hey, it's a one-run game. You got runners on first and second, one out. Someone comes out the bullpen, strikeout, strikeout, game over. Wow. That's what that shit feels like. That feels good. You haven't had that yet this year. Hey, and, I, and I'll say this too. Or down one run in the top of the eighth or bottom of the eighth. Two outs, guy gets on base with a single. Next guy hits a two-run homer, or hits a double, ties the game. You're kind of you're you're basically out and out of the game. Two outs, nobody on base. This other guy, whoever's at the bat, fights his way on, gets on base, either walk, base hit, does something. The guy behind him follows it up with a big hit. Yeah, just that. So I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I was just saying something about being able to go on the road 
and being able to silence that, some people. That too. That kind of is someone, some of the starter too. That can, like stuff like that can help. Because even the first game of Vanderbilt, like being in the stadium, you could tell that it was a very uncomfortable. It wasn't oh she's about to step on her neck and put this thing away. It was oh uh oh here it, like the other foot's about to drop, and you could feel it all around the stadium. Not only. Like looking around, like the fans were expecting something bad to happen. Well, th- As, that, so but, that's a different feel. My but, point is, is, when you go on the road, yeah. and you know from the start everyone's against you, especially Tennessee, and then, and then you shut them up. That's a different feeling. I could care less if you're at home and you feel like the fans feel like, oh, I might. No, no, no. You still go do it because if if it's good, they'll cheer for you, right? But when you go on the road and you shut someone up and it's good and it's quiet, that's when it's like, oh, I think it's different. It's different. I, I think you said it, and this is going to sound very old schoolish, and I don't mean it to sound this way, but at the end of the day, it's exactly what needs to happen. You said earlier about Kate Anderson when you watch him pitch. What did you say he does well? Competes. Yeah. Hey, he's going to go on the mound, and he's going to come at you, and he's going to compete. He's gonna... At some point, it can't be about velo or, hey, am I, am I, am I doing this right, <laughs> or is my mechan- are my mechanics right? At some point, it's got to be, hey, i got to get this guy out. I don't care if I throw it underhand and I get him out, I've got to go out and get him out. And how do I do that? Throw strikes, right? Okay, I'm hitting. I have got to get on base. I don't care what that looks like. I don't care about hitting a homer. I don't care about getting a base hit. I just got to get on base. Next guy has to get on base. The next guy has to get on base. And you keep having that mentality, and you keep just saying, I'm just going to compete through this whole shit. Like, I don't care. I don't care what my numbers look like. I don't care what – and I'm not saying that they do, but – that's the mentality you have to have to to get over the hump because it's got to be about all right. I need to feel like compete. I'm giving everything I can to compete to try to get the win. One pitch at a time. And that's cliche, but you just got to compete. Compete. That's it. Um, because it, and to your point, like it's kind of the same thing that we've been seeing all year, which is where's the you score multiple runs in an inning, then you have a clean inning after, where you go out, you go up three to nothing, it stays three to nothing, then it's five to nothing. Instead of, all right, you scored two, you two solo home runs, and you give up, now it's three to two. And, all right, you just had a lead, you lost it. It's never been a consistent LSU scores three runs, doesn't give up any runs, and then scores two more runs, and you start putting teams away, as opposed to every inning, it's the game is basically starting over zero zero. Are the are the opposite way around? What about when you give up the three runs and you don't come back the next inning and say, "Hey, we got to scratch something." Something. We got to get something back. We not, can't go into the next inning and still three. Not, to, we got to get something back. Not a twelve pitch inning where you're it's back playing defense full, again. And, yeah, it's got to be a full effort of both sides doing it together. It's no complimentary baseball at this point. None. Yeah. None. And the hitting, the runners with scoring position in the hitting is just that's what. If you look back at this team and this this year doesn't go the way that and it's still a, there's plenty of time left, but it has to be now. But if you go back and you want to get like the book on LSU baseball, that's what you'll look back and see is runners with scoring position, less than two outs, you didn't get any runs. Well, I mean that's that's the know, book the right end, now. It's every team, it's right? Hard, it's hard to win with a whole bunch of solo singles and solo homers. <laughs> you're, not, you're not really going to hit a lot of those, right? Yeah. Got to be able to get hits. When there's people on base, it's just, you just the name of baseball. Consistent lineup. And usually, when do pitchers start buckling down? Probably when there's people yep. on base. Just how it goes. Yep. I'm not out, but I'm very interested to see Tennessee. I think that is going to that'll write your that, that'll write your story right there. Yeah, you can't come back there in twelve. Can't. No, I mean, you, you can't. Just can't. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I mean, like I said, there, it's, it, every game that this team steps on the field is one of them. Yeah. It is. And so the league is I'm, moving I'm very, I'm very confident they're going to figure it out. I am. I'm very confident that they're going to be playing their best baseball going into the tournament and going into the postseason. But they got to start now. You're running out of time to start. <laughs> got to start. <laughs> Keep saying it. At some point, you're going to look up, going to be I've over. been saying since the start of this thing, I think this will be a second-half team. I think they'll be better in the second half than they were in the first half. But, damn. It's coming close. It's coming quick. We're it in, is, the, it, it, it is in the second it, half. We're in the second <laughs> half. <laughs> it's here. Like, let's go. It is getting quick. <laughs> it is coming fast. Um, but, you know, they're back, on the, they're back on the diamond tomorrow against Magnese at home. And if you think Magnese ain't coming for blood, oh. no. <laughs> if you think they don't see you down, right? You, you, come on, you know what they're coming with. Mm-hmm. Meet it. You got to meet that intensity. So who do you think they throw? LSU. I don't care who they throw. <laughs> I really don't. That's that's the point. 
it's it's to me it's not a who it's a mindset Throw these guys are not that bad yeah they're not that bad the team is they have they're it's full of good players i don't give a shit who somebody's got two if yeah. that makes any sense yeah. like it doesn't really matter who could be me i'll be there ask jay dude he might put you in Close. I mean, Jay almost signed his uh, nine-year-old nephew. <laughs> saw that? He got he got nine outs on twenty-five pitches. Said he almost offered him a scholarship. Jokingly. Pull that obviously. tape up. Yeah. Oh, That's how you do it, fellas. Look at this. Um. All right. I'll go in the dugout. I thought we were gonna talk more about other stuff. But there's really nothing to talk about. Uh, John Kyle Perry. That's that thing is. That's a mistake of the day. Have you seen this? Where? I'll oh, show it. I'll pull it. Okay. Up. It's all right. Well, let's get to it. Mistake of the day is brought to you by our friends at Dozy Place. And you. The mistake of the day. Obviously, the Calipari news was huge. Shocking, I would say, where he was even said, oh, I didn't know that they were mad at me. I mean, he had no clue that Kentucky that the Kentucky fan base was calling for his job. He was like, oh, I guess I made the right decision, made the right decision to leave. And Kentucky, good thing, had gave it, it was basically an open marriage where he was like, hey, you can go look around, see if you could find a better spot that you think is better than Kentucky basketball and Arkansas and the chicken man. <laughs> Makes an offer that you can't refuse, and here is Calipari in Kentucky when the news. So that's not a child he's walking. Hey, coach, it's his dog. Oh, I know. I know. You I'm watching your dog. Right? <laughs> See, no, I'm good. good. Come on, Paul. That's his dog. Come on, my dog. My dog is walking me. Come on. They tried to get an interview. What's in the stroller? Snacks? It's for the dog Fruits? when he gets tired. But that was because he can't talk about walking the dog. And then he pulls the fake phone out to pretend like, oh, I'm getting a call too. Hold on, I can't do any of this right now. So Calipari uh-huh. exits it as, I would say, as non-gracefully as possible. But that's who he is. Good luck, Arkansas. The SEC got better in a different way. I mean, he's gonna do. He's gonna kill it in Arkansas. Or the SEC West got better. Which one? Yeah, yeah. SEC West. <laughs> you got one? Oh, actually, current calls brought to you by our friends at Assured and Partners. And me? Uh, yeah, I'll lead it off. My uh, curtain call will go to the women's basketball side of this thing, and it'll go to one of the national championship winning Gamecocks, Lady Gamecocks, Raven Johnson. A year ago, playing against the same team, she was basically shooed and said, "Hey." You can stand out there. We don't care if you can shoot. So she's been on a revenge tour the entire year, and she found a way when it mattered, obviously, the most as the primary defender on Caitlin Clark, even though Caitlin somehow still scored 30-plus in that game. But as a primary defender on her, she went – Caitlin Clark went 3-for-11 with four turnovers with Raven Johnson Gardner on her way to a national championship. So I'm going to give a curtain call of that because that's strong. I'm sure that's something that was on her mind – since the season ended last year, it didn't end the way they wanted to, and she made it a point to come out and shut Caitlin Clark down when she had a chance to. Yep. Lord you got one? Um, curtain call to – it might just be curtains to Morgan Wallen. I don't know what <laughs> – I don't know. I mean, he, he talk about your old-school country star. He is doing it all right now where he throws – He just so happened to throw the chair in front of cops. Yeah, he threw it six it floors almost, off of a balcony. It almost hit it, cops. It almost hit a policeman. So, yeah. curtain yeah, call to Morgan Wallen's career. Allie's not very happy because she's afraid that his tour is going to get postponed and she had tickets to his, his – uh, Is he good? A con- yeah, he's good. I like him. But, yeah, she had tickets to his concert at, in Oxford. In this this month, actually. Yeah, I think he'll be shutting it down for mm. a little bit. I don't know. We'll see. He's a big, I guess he, uh, like I said, old school country star. Got a little kid rock in him. Yeah. You think he's still drinking? Oh, right now, for sure. He's smiling <laughs> in the mug shot. He doesn't give a shit. I don't think, he's throwing, I don't think he's throwing that off unless he's had a couple. Yeah, it was, it was pretty. Uh... Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure the team around is him. Is there a video? Like, yeah, I haven't seen a video. I haven't seen it. a video either. I just saw his mug shot where he was just happy as can be. Could you imagine how chair falling next to you? I mean, he's a fraternity kid. He's acting like he's in college or high school. Um, all right. My curtain call. Hell yeah. Boys, we did it. So far. Again. Maybe. Finally. Our guy, Cooper. Dejan. Dejean. However, however he says it. Down here we say Dejan. 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 CD. CD. <laughs> Came out there. 
This is after he got and look, hurt. he's projected first rounder. He's a cornerback. Believe it or not. Don't get it twisted. C B. Like he is a corner. C B is a C B. Back. Right? Defensive back. He ran a four four three look, four. You're already trying to turn him into a, <laughs> into a safety. Don't get it twisted. Defensive a back. Safety. You're already trying to turn him into a He's not a safety. He he's is listed corner. as a cornerback. <laughs> He has a 4-4-3 40-yard dash. Jumped a 38-and-a-half-foot in, uh, inch vertical, same as Steve Smith. Same broad jump as Jalen Johnson at 10-4. More bench reps than Antro Roll. And Caucasian. He's a real, he's real. He is real. Like, now if you want to scroll down this, whatever, this link that I put up there, he's got... You know, the splits and all that kind of stuff. I mean, shout out to, shout out to this guy, man. He's a super athlete and uh, elite. A rare breed, some may say. Some, we'll see. We'll we will gonna, see. We'll hey, keep. listen, we had this debate. This is big. Has, hey, this, this is big. Big, if it big doesn't, for the team. Listen, if it doesn't go good, I'm not saying that it won't. <laughs> I'm just saying, if it doesn't go good, it'll never happen. And it might not ooh, ever happen. Again. Put it way happen. deeper in there. <laughs> Back that's in the all hole. I'm saying. It'll that's that's all again. I'm saying. Big for the team. A lot of pressure. We actually have, we can fill that position now. Yeah. For the, <laughs> I mean, for the you don't have to talk. bring a guy to retirement to fill it. Cooper, you got a lot on your back, cuz. Uh, <laughs> hey, a lot. A lot. <laughs> we'll, we'll, but regardless of you know whatever, that was unbelievable pro day, and I think he proved that he's a first rounder. So shout out to Coop. Do it. Do it for us. One time. One time for the home team. Um, Will Compton, first overall pick. First overall pick. Um, all right. Good show today. That's all we got today. We're a little late. Sorry about that. But New you know, computer. Uh, uh, that's what it is. <laughs> Something um, like that. Something look, like that. Look how good you look. We will be... Cameras, we did, we did fix the cameras. Look but that happened before the show started. So, like, way before. Um... Well, then we will be back live in studio Job well done. from 6 to 8 p.m. <laughs> on Wednesday. Now, we will have Jay calling in from the hotel in Charlotte. Yeah, I'll your be debut. Sh- be in Charlotte. If you, uh, if you want to see our boys make his debut on Thursday. SEC Network Thursday night, uh, give, him, give him a view. Look at it. Turn it on. SEC Network. It's uh, What time is the show? I'm not exactly sure. Just, we don't even know. Just going to be yeah, on there. We'll find out. It'll we'll be like the post game we'll or like you pre-game. Wednesday. You'll know about that. And then uh, Peter yeah. Burns will be up there chatting it up about college baseball. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but he will call in, video call on Wednesday to be Plug part of the show. show. Plug the He's show. dedicated. We love that. Plug the show. Um, so, we'll be back live in studio from uh, 6 to 8 p.m. Enjoy the rest of your book. College basketball national championship is tonight. Crazy that it starts at 8.30. What? Oh, the, 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 the yeah, basketball so national championship, eight thirty. Crazy. Appreciate um, that for them not taking over the showtime. That's I mean, why. I'm not gonna be able to stay away for the whole game. No, no shot. Um, that's tonight. Who enjoy wins? the rest of your Monday. I hope you got to enjoy the solar eclipse, the the full solar eclipse. I did not see it. Um, it's crazy. All the technology that we have, they are. Uh, they said that you had to look at the solar eclipse with the the 3D, the old '90s 3D glasses. Oh hell yeah. Like, pretty wild. That, that was the glasses that you had to wear. Um, at least that's what it looked like. Um, enjoy the night. We appreciate you if you like watching us. And we... Uh, <laughs> Do you see the stats of Odell Beckham after he looked at the solar eclipse? Uh-uh. He did it without the glasses on. Odell, <laughs> staring directly at the eclipse in 2017. 635 yards per season, four touchdowns, no Pro Bowls. Before pre-eclipse. <laughs> Thirteen hundred yards a season, twelve touchdowns, three Pro Bowls. So that's it. It broke him. That was it. it broke him. It broke him. Maybe it was injuries, mm. Achilles, and ACLs. Yeah. No, did. it was his son. It was his son. Yeah. Um, if you like watching us, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We do this uh, three days a week. If you can't watch us or you don't like watching us, you like listening to us, or anywhere you get your pods, the thumbs up button really helps us out. Um, we appreciate you. <laughs> we love you. Tell and a friend. That's it. Tell a friend. Phone a friend. And. Uh, about How long you ain't supposed to look? <laughs> get his ass kicked right now. You see it, bro? What did he did it again? How long you ain't supposed to look at it? Fuck. I mean, that's wild. Why would you do that? <laughs> I don't know. I hate looking at the someone I'm driving on accident. Much less stare at a big old bright spot. Right. Uh, all right. Enjoy your night. Enjoy Fair. the rest of your week. We'll see you on Wednesday. Uh, hopefully, talking, recapping LSU win and previewing uh, big series. 
SEC. SEC, baby. See ya. Peace. Bye. Bye.